Добро, уште еднаш официјално, добро вечер. Јон Калман Стефансон, награда Букстар 2024. Сеопватно искуство кое продира најдлабоко во човекот, пружајќи му исконско патување низ природата. Трилогијата помеѓу рајот и пеколот на Јон Калман Стефансон е доказ за ливскиот квалитет проткаен во прозно дело, односно умешноста на авторот да спои и диолект на поет со приказна зачната од прозаист. Во помеѓу рајот и пеколот, Стефансон ги спојува метафизичките размисли со поетски вдахновените слики, создавајќи наратив во гледало на величенствените пезажи на Исланд, навлегувајќи во екзистенцијални теми. Солзите на ангелите ја продолжува оваа синтеза, користејќи поетски јазик за да евоцира суровата реалност на животот, мешајќи ја интроспективната лабочина на епската нарација. Срцето на човекот дополнително го акцентира спојот на испреплетени лични приказни со филозофски размислувања, истражувајќи ја човековата поврзаност и природата на постојањето. Секој од трите романи го заробува читателот во свет на замаглени жанровски граници, нудејќи динамично книжевно патување. Ваквата постапка ја подобрува емоционалната резонанца на наративот, покажувајќи како лирскиот белек кај авторот се истакнува во прозните достигнувања. Ова докажува дека Стефансон мајсторски го има сработено метаморфозниот елемент на текстот, зашто и побудува низа емоции ке читателите. Сликовитиот приказ на немилосрдната исландска природа, авторот го вовлекува до најдлобокото од човекот, очајот за да ја прослави спасителната моќ на пријателството. Оваа трилогија може да се класифицира како исклучително лична и длабока интимна приказна. Не зашто читателот е внесен во чудесната природа во светот на Стефансон, туку токму поради секојдневните чувства кои се обработуваат. Тага, болка, надеж, скриена радост. Јон Калман Стефансон ја има таа моќ преку своето пишување и секојдневните случување чувства да ги направи уникатни патувања врз имагенецијата на читателот од кој тој нема да излезе ист, ист како што бил на почетокот. Неговото творештво е преградка меѓу поезијата и прозата, од што се буди ново битие во срцето на читателот. Затоа, имајќи предвид дека оваа година метаморфозата е инспирација на нашиот фестивал, одлучивме годинашен лауреат на наградата Букстар да биде токму Јон Калман Стефансон за неговата трилогија «Помеѓу рајот и пеколот». Му честитаме! Jon Kalman Stefansson, Bookstar Award 2024. A comprehensive experience that penetrates most deeply into the human being, providing him with primordial journey throughout nature. The theology Heaven and Hell by Jon Kalman Stefansson is a proof of the lyrical quality woven into a prose work, expressly the, the author's writing skill to combine the idiolect of a poet with a story conceived by a fictional writer. In the first book, Heaven and Hell, Stefansson combines metaphysical reflections with poetically inspired Im imagery, creating a narrative mirroring Iceland's majestic landscapes, delving into the existential themes. The Sorrow of Angels continues this synthesis, using poetic language to evoke the harsh reality of life, mixing the introspective depth with the epic narrative. The Heart of a Man, further accentuates the blend of interwoven personal stories with philosophical musings, exploring human connection and the nature of existence. Each of these novel, novels traps the reader into a world of blurred genre boundaries, offering a dynamic literary journey. This procedure enhances the most emotional resonance of the narrative, showing how the lyrical mark of the author stands out in his prose achievements. This proves that Stefansson has masterfully worked out the metaphorical events of the text, which arouses a series of emotions in the readers. The graphic depiction of the merciless Icelandic nature draws the author into the deepest part of a man, of a human, despair to celebrate the saving power of friendship. This trilogy can be classified as an extremely personal and deeply intimate story, not because the reader is brought into the wonderful nature of Stephenson's world, but precisely because of everyday feelings that are dealt with, sadness, pain, hope, or joy. John, uh, John Kalman Stephenson has the power throughout his writing and the most everyday events and the feelings to make a journey unique on the reader's imagination which he will not come out the same as he was in the beginning. 
His work is an embrace between prose, poetry and prose, which awakens a new beginning in the heart of a reader. Therefore, taking into consideration that this edition of the Bookstar Festival is metamorphosis, uh, and that, that is the focus of the festival, we have decided, and the festival board has decided, that this year's laureate of the Bookstar Award will be Jon Kalman Stephenson for his trilogy Between Heaven and Hell. Congratulations. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Um, Jon, first, congratulations on the award. Really glad that you are here with us. I remember a few, few years ago, after reading the trilogy, I was talking to Jarko, and we were discussing the trilogy, and I said it would be so good to have Jon Kalman Stephenson come to Skopje to Bookstar, and Jarko said, We'll see, we'll work on that, we'll give our best, and a few years later, here you are, for me personally, being a huge fan of this trilogy and of your work, it's a real honor and pleasure to have you here uh, with us at Bookstar. Um, so, uh, the, title, the title of this event is Where Do Poetry and Prose Embrace? And personally, I mainly talk about fiction, but tonight we have Nikola Majirov, one of the best uh, poets in Macedonia, Europe, and I can continue. I would say he's a world world poet, in my opinion. And uh, so you will be kind of caught in the crossfire of fiction kind of questions, literary fiction, and poetry questions, and let's see where do we go from here. I'm, I'm really excited about this conversation. And I would like to start, I would like to start this conversation a little bit with a broader theme, and um, Icelandic literature is a phenomenon in itself, in my opinion. Like we discussed a little bit also, Icelandic music is a phenomenon for such a small nation to produce such a good quality and quantity also. And I know that we discussed with Irsa Sigurdardotir and Sion and we were like, what is the secret? Why, why, because of the sagas, it's embedded, reading and books are embedded into Icelandic culture, and you have, a, you have, there is a little scene <coughs> in one of these books, I think it's in the, the, the uh, Sorrow of Angels, when this, in this far away, forgotten village, there is this lady who says to the boy, just, here's money, give me, buy me a book, a single book, and there is a, there is a moment when he says, I think he will leave some money, and says to a very poor family, buy a few, few uh, pages of just paper for the kids, to, to draw and write, so it's embedded in Icelandic culture. But I'm thinking, how does, how, but Iceland is it's very present in this trilogy. And Icelandic nature and wilderness and, and being harsh and being extremely beautiful. So how does Iceland as a land, as nature, as landscape, you think influences Icelandic writing and makes it unique but also it influenced your writing in the trilogy. Hello, hello, do you hear me? Oh. Oh. Uh, very nice to be here in, in Skopje and, and I'm proud for this wonderful star. Uh, I'm always, you know, I, I want to be a, a, a well, I, one of the person who, who influenced me 
uh, heavily when I was young was Carl Sagan. He was an uh, American ast astronomer, ast astronomer. Uh, and he made a program about, about uh, the universe and, and, and it's completely changed my mind. I was working in a fish factory at the time and a bit lost and, and w when I saw the first program it, uh, everything changed and, and, and uh, you know, I thought that uh, I was you know, meant to gaze at the star and finding a new universe there. So I've always been, you know, fond of stars. So, so I'm very happy to have, to be able to take one from, 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 from Skopje. Um, well, it's a tricky question uh, or, or thing to talk about why Icelandic literature or music are so uh, why we have so many authors and, and musicians who have been doing it very good, uh, rather good in, in, in the whole world. It's, n it's no easy answers and, and you will very soon be, you know, going to cliches. Uh, of course, uh, the Icelandic sagas, the great Icelandic sagas from the 13th century, they, they are very important. And, not import, only important for, for our literature, but also for our language. Because we more or less speak the same language as they spoke at, at that time. Uh, but for me, uh, you know, when, when, when I started to write fiction uh, in 1995, uh, I think, my first book, uh, fiction book was published in 1996. Uh, people then started to ask me more or less the same question, you know, why are nature so important in your, in your, uh, in your work? And, and I, I was a bit surprised because I never thought about it. And I, I never think about you know, nature while I'm writing. You know, I'm telling a story, I'm, I'm I'm, 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 I'm trying to uh, dig deep into the, the, the persons that I'm, I'm writing about. But nature is just part of my inner world. And, uh, you know, it comes without thinking, uh, describing, you know, whatever, you know, weather or, or, or nature. So, so it's... Uh, For me, it's just a part of the inner music in, in myself. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't see myself as writing about nature. It's just, just part of the breath of, the, of my style, I, th I think. Uh, but Icelandic nature and weather, for me, it's, it's the same thing. Uh, Living there, it's impossible not to be affected with it. Both because the the weather is is very exciting. Uh, you never know what will hit you, uh, and and uh, one of the most beautiful words in Icelandic is is a lock, which is uh, calm or or you know wind still. Uh, and, and if you use that word in, in, in a poem or, or in a novel or, or just say it, everyone in Iceland feel good. They, they, it's, it's, something, it's something that, 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 that they dream of. Uh, my friend's translator, he, it was a big problem for him because I use that word sometimes. And, and in France, that's, that's this thing, lock, wind still, is a nightmare, because when, then it's far too hot or, or something. So anyway, that, that was a you know, side way. Uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 where was I? I lost my thread. Yes, here it is. Uh, the, the weather in Iceland, and the nature, it's a living thing. 
uh, of course you know you know living nature here you know uh, uh, terrible earthquakes but we also have this this you know volcanoes and 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 everything so 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 it's i guess it's a yeah it's it's a living thing both the weather and the nature and 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 it's affect us in in that sense uh and for me, it becomes part of, of my style and, and my and my language. Uh, but I, as I said, I'm 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 always yeah. surprised when I'm asked about it. So it's 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 almost inevitable to be an Icelander and writing. Nature is all present, is there, and you're not conscious of it. Thank you very much. Yeah, and also when when you're an Icelander, you're all, always asked about you know the, the weather and the nature. And 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 when the, our football team was going doing great things, you were always asked about football. And when there is a volcano in in Iceland, everybody asks you about that. And when the bank crisis were, everybody was asking about that. So you are forced as a writer to be an expert in everything. <laughs> Thank you. Do you do you think literature is exactly like a planting a tree in a in a volcano? Um, um, because you're, as you said, your l landscapes in your in your novels, they are in a way invisible for for you because they are so organic. They are part of 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 the inner silence, to say. Um, and yet, what we see in the music of or that we mentioned Siguros or Johan Johansson and or in uh, Yonsi, we see these soundscapes that in fact uh, just extend the landscapes that we know from nature or from the movies of Dagur Kari or other uh, great uh, writers and, 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 and artists. Um, you said in one interview that when they, you were asked again about nature, you said, I'm just a shepherd. Yeah. Pessoa also used to say that he wants, she was just a, a shepherd. It's not his intention to be a poet. And a part of this planting the tree in a volcano, another question arises. If you're the shepherd, what the words of your lost or your lost memories are then? What, is what are the words that you are using? As you say, you use words to, in one interview to make music. Yeah. Or your memories, how do you find them if you are the shepherd? How do you look at them? Uh, well, many things uh, pops up to my mind when, while you were talking. Uh, and and I, I was picturing that, you know, planting tree in the, in the uh, lava. Uh, because we have near Reykjavik, we, we have been have uh, you know ongoing small er eruption for for almost two years. With you know it comes and, and stays for some weeks, and then it's quiet down and come again. Uh, and it's very difficult to plant tree in a in a lava. Either it will burn down, or it will just die. So it's impossible to plant tree in lava, just so you know, so don't try it uh, if you come to Iceland. Uh, moss is, is, is the very thing in, in lava, and, and moss is the, one of the most beautiful thing you can ever see, because it's very soft, you can sleep on it, and it's changed color every time. And that's one of the thing in Iceland, that the light is never the same. Because it's ever changing, both the light in the air and the light on, on the ground, and that that's also music, you know. Uh, uh, where the words come from? Uh, one of the things that that surprised me when I started to write uh, fiction is that I don't control over what I'm writing. Uh, I sometimes say that I have ve never written a book that I was going to write. And I'm a, I, I fear that day when, uh, when I will be able to write the book that I'm going to write, because I'm sure that will be a very bad book. 
because for me, writing is discovering new world. Uh, I start with maybe some plan, but it all goes up in smoke soon as I start to write, you know, all kinds of new characters and new episodes pops up. Characters that I've never thought of, episodes that I have never thought of. And, 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 and also that the words, the words that are coming up, uh, some of them that I didn't know that I knew. So, writing is creating. And as a writer, you are sort of God. But happily, you are very, you're a failure being a God. Well, we can't dis discuss that if the God is a failure or not, you know. Uh, but it's, it's incredible that, that you can create something that is much bigger than you. And that's one of the very mystery thing about art in general. Usually, if book is good, if, 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 if uh, music is good, it's usually much bigger than, than the, the artist. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mentioned tree just because of this, because uh, planting the tree, in fact, is that will overleave you, is in a way um, a beginning of being an artist mm. is the beginning of being a nomad that is afraid of return, of accumulation of words. Brodsky used to say that literature started with the songs of the nomads mm. and after the, came the, the, the uh, stories of the settlers. Mm. And I, I see poetry traveling through your, work, through your lines there, no matter there is no whiteness around on the margins of, of the papers, but I see the whiteness in, inside the words, this breathing of the uh, landscapes, the, the, how you build the characters. And Alexander, I think you, you agree with, uh, with, uh, with this moment because we talked about the, the poetry in the prose of, of Yon that really uh, it's astonishing. It's very hard uh, because to do it because every time we see something, let's say nice, we say, oh, it's poetry. And it makes it this word uh, banal in a way. But I don't see this in your work. Uh. Basically, it's because that, that's, the only, that's the only way I can write. Uh, I, I, when I started to write fiction, I, I tried to write, well, I didn't know how to, you know, I, I, I was sure that I was, you know, poet and nothing else. And, and, but then, you know, you can't control over what you do and, uh, as a writer. And the fiction was always knocking on the door. And then I started to, to write, and, and I thought, honestly, that, that you, you were supposed to control over the, your writing, and, and that you can, then you, that you could, uh, could uh, decide what, what would happen. And I, I wrote two books like that, and they were, they were terrible. Uh, happily, nobody <coughs> read that. Only me. If if somebody have, have, would have read that in Iceland, I would be ar arrested and put in prison. That's, uh, they, yeah, yeah, I mean they, they 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 do that in Iceland if the book is very bad. And and uh, but the thing is, while I was writing this 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 book. There were two books, but they were, you know, literally the same. And and uh, it was supposed to be out then about the night love in in Reykjavik, uh, because I I didn't want to write about the countryside. Uh, but then, in the middle of 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 the novel, the main character uh, took a taxi in the center of Reykjavik and and asked him to drive into the countryside. I tried to stop him, and 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 you know I 
told him, you know, I, I can't afford a taxi to the countryside, and, and, but he didn't listen, listen to me, and so I have to follow him. And a strange thing happened when I was describing the traveling into the driving uh, through the light of the city and into the darkness of the nature. Uh, suddenly it was so much more easier to write. You know, it, suddenly, it, it, before it was a more staccato, now it was a f flow. And, and so slowly I realized that I shouldn't try to decide what to write or how to write. It's just like, you know, you're sitting down with your instrument and, and you have something in your mind, in your body, in your dreams that you are not sure what it is. So you just start. And then pops up all kinds of character who, who, who demands that their story will be told. But I, 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 uh, I wanted also to write different kinds of novels. I wanted to expand the form of the novel. And I think that blending, blending poetry and prose together is, is one way of doing it. But again, it's not something that I think about. I mean, that's the only way I can write. I, you know, I don't think, you know, now I'll read poetic sentence. It's, it's just... It's just in my breath. Thank you. Um, in one interview, you say that you want your poetry to, to impact people, to influence people. So what, what was, I'm just curious about, about this trilogy, what was the, I am, I am going to repeat the same question, but what was the central idea, the main drive? What, how did you want this trilogy to, to impact people, if that's not a cliche of a word? What did you want them to, to get? What kind of emotion or thinking from reading this trilogy? Did you have something like that? Yeah, mostly that, that they will come to Iceland and spend a lot of money. <laughs> so helping the tourist yeah, industry you know, of because Iceland. Our, our, our economy was going very badly, so, so I had this idea. Now, uh, you know, firstly, uh, I wasn't writing trilogy when I started the, the Heaven and Hell. Mm. It was supposed to be a one book. Uh, but then, when I was, you know, in, uh, you know, over the half of the book, then I realized it was too much ma material for one book. Mm. So, book two ar ar arrived. Uh, and then, when I was in the middle of that book, I realized that it was too much material for two books. <laughs> So, number three came. Uh, I, when I was in the middle of that book, I was terrified that I, it would be four books. <laughs> but but uh, that, that didn't happen. So, there was no planning. And yes, I want, I want to change the world with my writing. That has always been my dream or purpose since I started as a poet. Uh, and I want to, that my writing will affect the people that will, if not change something inside them, then, uh, then affect them in some way or other, touch the, 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 the scar inside them or the, the, the heart or, or, or make them dream make their dreams bigger, uh, make them see the world maybe slightly differently while they're reading, etc. Uh, but I never think of, of, you know, that because I'm writing about this and this, then it's more, more, more likely that I will achieve. Uh, f strictly, for me, it doesn't matter what you're writing about. Uh, it's more how you write it uh, and you said that the one book you said it doesn't matter what your book is about but what your book is what is the book yeah i mean uh, of course 
uh, it matters, you know, good stories, funny stories, uh, sad stories, great characters, etc. All that matters, but but you can you can tell have a great story about you know huge huge thing, and you can tell in in that way that nobody cares. But then you can tell a story, you know, which take place even in a, in a uh, r remote place in the world, and it, it, uh, what you write about, what they are thinking, doesn't affect anyone. It's something very small and unimportant. But if you write in, in, such, in, in such and such a way, then perhaps you can change the world. Yeah. Well. Darvish used to say that writing poetry, maybe you don't change the world, but at least you relocate the candles in the darkness. So uh, the main protagonist of the trilogy, Heaven and Hell, and also the three books, Sorrow, The Sorrow of Angels and the Heart of Men, is the boy with no name. It's interesting because the other characters are named, most of them. So does naming kill the mystery of presence? Because, you know, in, when invaders, invaders come, they usually change the name of uh, cities, rivers. Sometimes even they, they erase or break the carved names on, on the gravestones. And um, so without... I was thinking that without name, one cannot be imprisoned by the banality of evil or, or uh, but society. What was your idea when you decided no references to how to build a character without name? Uh, I, was, I was roughly in the middle of the book, Heaven and Hell, when I discovered that he, uh, the boy didn't have a name. Uh, and I paused for a you know half minute or something, and I thought you know he he doesn't have a, no name, and then I thought ah fine ideas, and start and kept on r writing. So I never gave it a thought, but when the book was coming out in Iceland, I realized that that I have to explain. I knew I will, I will get that question, and, and then I found a very good answer, which, of course, I forgot when I went, into, went to the interview. Uh, but uh, firstly, being a writer or poet, you don't have to understand what you're doing. Uh, you don't have to understand the meaning behind the idea, or, or, or that's, that's your luxury. Uh, to understand, that's for others. Uh, but I think that not giving him a name, then you were giving him all the name in the world. Exactly. So you can name him, yes. you know, but that's just a theory, you know, you, you don't, don't have to believe it. Mm, thank you. It's, um, there is one thing when you read the trilogy, there is one thing about the narrator which you need to kind of feel and decode and can you help us understand So, who is telling the story actually? Well, there are some we who are telling the story and, mm. and uh, for me, one of the most important thing in story is how they are told. Mm. So when you are starting an, a, a novel, that's you know the basic question: how are you going to tell the story? And you have so many different ways mm. to do that, and the outcome will uh, will will be totally affected from what choose you make. I didn't want to write a historical novel. Histor historical novel can be very dangerous for authors. 
uh, because many good authors have written historical novels and that's like they as an author just disappeared. That the, the, the story and the history takes everything over. Mm. And therefore many, many uh, historical novels are for me too traditional. And, and I, I hesitate before I started to, to write Heaven and Hell and, uh, because, you know, I wanted to have, I wanted to overstep the, the, the historical novel and I think it helped me when I, when I read uh, Baltasar and, and Plimunda by Ose Saramago, the great uh, Portuguese uh, writer who was also a poet in style. Uh, then I, I maybe he helped me to realize that, that you can just as with all other novels, in historical novel you can do whatever. And, 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 and I also wanted to write a novel here and now, which, you know, that our time uh, would breathe through every pages. Uh, but I also wanted to catch the atmosphere of, of, of the time where th things are happening, you know, just before 19, 1900. Uh, so I needed, you know, a storyteller who, who, who knew both our time and, and, and the, the, the old time and the past. Uh, because it was written in, in, you know, I started to write it late 2005, so it was not possible to have a old wise man or woman telling a story, because then they would have to be, you know, 120, mm -hmm. and and which is, you know, there are there aren't many 120 years old people who can tell a story and and not three books. Uh, but then I, when I was fumbling with it, trying, trying to find my way, suddenly I just wrote the settings. We are almost darkness. Mm. And, and I, you know, I, then I, you know, I start to think, we, who are they? Mm. And then I realize, or come to that, uh, came to that uh, uh, conclusion that, those who are telling the story are people who lived in that time uh, and they are still among us, but they, it's, it's a, they are ghosts, but they cling to life because there was something in, they did something in their life or perhaps did not that uh, banned them or won't allow them to be free from our life or our earth or our existence. They are want, there's something that are holding them, so they can't go into the darkness and, and be free there or, or into the other world. So I was thankful for them to being there for me and telling all those stories. Uh, but feeling guilty that, that I was holding them. So partly, I wrote those books, I wrote those stories in that hope that I would be able to write them that good and, 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 and tell them that in that powerful way that it would, would uh, re re release them. Wow, and you have done it in a very powerful <laughs> way in the trilogy. Yeah, but you know, I didn't know that, uh, that I don't decide if they will become free. That's not me mm. to decide. Yeah. That's the readers. They are the only one who can decide mm. if they should be free. So that's why I will not use the word use when you write. So I will not ask you, did you use the snow as a metaphor of the storyteller 
in between times. No, I'm. I'm. Uh, so, you know, did you find the snow? Because I will read one uh, wonderful um, uh, the opening of heaven and hell. The world white with snow, although not purely white, here it is never purely white, no matter how much snow falls. And the cold penetrates deep into the heart where dreams have their home. The color white never wins. I saw the snow, like the media between two times, the one that it covers, but still the memories are on the surface, so it's never white. And the presence the footsteps of your characters. This is one of the most beautiful opening of, uh, if we count Dubliners uh, choice, even we have the, the insomnia of Dmitry Durazovsky, beautiful scene with the snow. How do you find this whiteness, as we mentioned before? Um, you say it is not good the color white never wins, but it's not good for literature if the whiteness of the page doesn't win. Well, uh, uh, I I never use uh, metaphors or or images uh, as you know as a simple. Uh, as you referred to earlier that, that, that I'm, I'm a shepherd. So I'm, 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 I'm a very simple soul. Uh, so I don't write to make simples, I, I just write to create life. And, and I can't help it writing about nature in, in that way as, as you see it, but for me, the, one of the most important things uh, for me as, as a writer is to, because I, you know, in all the books that I've written, I've, uh, some of them take place in, in our time, but almost all, in all of them I, I tend to go back in time. Uh, and I think it's because that I am fighting against uh, for forgetfulness uh, because that's the, the biggest enemy that I can think of. Because we, we die two times. First, when our body dies and we are putting in the, in the ground. The second death is much more uh, it's much more darker. That's when nobody re reminds you anymore. And I, I partly write to 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 you know go back in in time and find people there and telling them the story so they will be remembered. Uh, so I am constantly fighting against death and uh, everything that, that, that he brings with him. Uh, and to be able to do that, I use every tool that I can think of. So for me, writing is, it is a matter of life and death, you know. Uh, I try to put everything that I possibly have inside me in the book. So I try to, you know, use the style or the structure and, and the language and, and everything. Mm. And, and uh, But at the same time, I, I write because that's the only thing I can do. Mm. Uh, I mean, I would, you know, in a way, I would suffocate if, if I, because I breathe through my mm. writing. I mean, I have a wonderful life and 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 i have you know i i, I love my my wife uh, i think she is the most beautiful person on earth i i, I love my kids and my cat and my dog who sadly passed away 
and and I've started to write about him, so he will be re 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 remembered. Remembers, yeah. And but uh, <coughs> it's a great thing to be able to write, and it, it's often fun, but of course sometimes it's a fucking hard, mm. and it's uh, you know you're full of doubt about yourself, and 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 you're sure that it is far worse thing that, uh, that nobody has, has written, and that's very important. Mm. If I would, you know, v wake up and start to write, and I w wouldn't doubt about myself, I would stop to write mm. and uh, re return to being a shepherd. Mm. Thank you for this answer. And the thing is, my <laughs> literally, my next question was, um, how can poetry or prose help us with fear of death? But, because this was such a great answer, I would like to leave it there and go back to Nicola. And that was, that was my last like serious, serious, like deep question. My next one will be more fun and more light. <laughs> okay. So he left the death for me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> to deal with it's, uh, it's a heavy burden. <laughs> heavy burden. And, and, yeah. and you take your, your glasses off, so we yeah, know yeah, it's so a very not serious. To, see the <laughs> to be uh, far from us, but anyway, in in your in your uh, book, your absence is darkness. Yeah, death appears there, and in a way, at the end of the book. You included the playlist of the death itself, death as a listener of music. Usually we, are, we imagine death silent when it comes, and we are the ones that shout. But how comes death to be a listener of music? Well, it, it, it strictly it was The voice of the death. Yeah, it strictly it wasn't my idea. It was one of the characters of the book. Who, who, who said it to me, and, and I wrote it down after him that 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 death is a most lonely person, if you could call it a person, on earth, because uh, he loves life. He's longing for. He, he wants to embrace life, but every time he touches life, it dies. So there his loneliness and sorrow comes from. So this character said that, that, that because death loves music, because music and poetry are almost the only thing that no poetry stops. Uh, that's the only thing that, that the people who have died uh, know of, you know, in the, in the land of, of the dead, uh, poetry uh, travels, and the music also. It's, 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 it's a fact, I'm not telling it, it's just a fact. So, so poets are, are the rock star in the land of death. So, you know, you have something to wait for. You will be a hero when you, when you, when you go, to, go to the other side. Uh, so yeah, that, that was his theory that 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 that, that uh, we should make a playlist for 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 death. Um, in uh, Spoon River anthology, Edgar Lee Masters um, writes a short poems. He imagined this small town called Spoon River, and he goes from one grave to another, reading the epitaphs of of the people, and he writes poems. So it's kind of a meta re remembrance. He makes the citizens of this the, the, uh, of this town alive again by reading their epitaphs and recreating the poems. So, what would be the epitaph of the death itself, if you want to write? Well, if uh, you mention those, you know, stones or cross. Uh, you know, I, I often go to churchyards, both in home and, and in Iceland, and and, all, and 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 when I'm traveling, and and you know, because you know, you walk around and, and you read on the stones and or or the cross, and and you have the names, 
and you have the, the, the when when they were born and when they died, and maybe one sentence, you know, uh, which is not about them, but just you know some comfort for for those who 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 who, uh, who are living, uh, and you know. You have the year when they were born, the year when they die, and then this slight, uh, what's it called, uh, the line between. And in this line, everything lies. Every sentence that they said, every kiss that they kiss, every every breath they take every 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 uh, their every dream the the, the daily life uh, the fear the happiness and 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 you know you walk around and you see all those story untold and you just have to do something with it it's it's our duty it's it's our duty to remember them who have have passed away both in within our you know family, but also in the in the whole world, because if you tell stories and if you remember, then we have a reason to be here uh, and to tell story also about normal people, how incredibly important normal life is. Uh, and if we keep on telling story about it, that's maybe one of the best way to stop stop the tanks from from uh, dictators or war lords. Thank you for that. My my last question is: when since we're on the topic a little bit of music, I would like to hear your ranking when it comes to lyrical genius, Bob Dylan. Nick Cave, Leonard Cohen. If you have to make it, put number one, number two, or is it a very, <laughs> is it a tough question? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, the best thing with you know, you can you can easily say, well, rather easily say, who is the best football player in the world? It's rather, you know, it's rather easy to 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 put that you know point of two or three, but one of the best thing with art that you can't say who is the best. Mm. Uh, so you have to have a list at least of 10 or 20 and nobody is on the top. And that's one of, one of the beauty mm. with, with, with art. So you, yeah, thank you. Thank you because I think almost all wars start in search for the best. Thank you, Jon. It was I yeah a pleasure to be, to talk to you after reading your your books and to pronounce your name to name you because for me you were before you were the boy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jon. Oh, that's all. All I can say is uh, thank you, Jon, for being with us for this great conversation i really enjoyed it thank you all for being here taking time staying with us thank you very much after after this yon will uh for those of you who want to have a signed copy yon will sign his books again thank you and after this we have a concert chalgia sound system right let's enjoy mm -hmm.